Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you tuning in from around the world. My name is Veronica McGowan, and I'm a Structures Operations Engineer for Virgin Galactic. I'd like to welcome you all to our fourth live space chat and the third in a series explaining how we design, build, and test our spaceships. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Fire, fire. Last week, Scott walked you through the basics of building a spaceship. Let's see how many of you can remember some of the fun facts Scott presented. First, what happens to aluminum when it gets too hot? And second, what insect did we borrow the honeycomb shape from? If you watched last week's space chat, put your answers in the side chat window on the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll be sure to go over the correct answers at the end of today's space chat. So before we get into the details, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I first joined the Virgin Galactic family in 2015 as an intern. Here's a picture of me next to Spaceship Unity from that summer. She may be a bit difficult to recognize without her beautiful paint job and other finishes, but this was a significant moment in Unity's history, weight on wheels. Weight on wheels is when the main structure of the spaceship is complete enough to the point where she can stand on her own wheels without any extra support. If you recall from last week's space chat, we shared a short video clip explaining how we reached that milestone on our next spaceship. Pretty soon, we'll have a whole fleet of spaceships. After my internship, I was so inspired by everything happening at both Virgin Galactic and the spaceship company that I decided to start up a college senior design project for a spaceship that launches from an airplane, a lot like Unity. I know a lot of you guys have been designing and building your own spaceships as well, and it's been awesome seeing the photos. My team and I designed and built multiple models, including a wind tunnel model and a remote control model. After the project was complete, I graduated with an aerospace engineering degree and started working full time for the spaceship company. The spaceship company is Virgin Galactic's manufacturing arm. They're responsible for most of the designing, building, and testing of spaceships. I spent most of my time with the spaceship company doing small scale structures testing, which we're gonna talk a little bit about today. I've moved to Virgin Galactic since then, but I've stayed with structures the whole time. So now on to today's topic, testing. Now, when I say testing, I don't mean an exam like what you have to take in school. This kind of testing is much more fun. Although just like in school, we learn a lot from testing. Testing is how we get to know the different parts of our spaceship to make sure they can withstand multiple trips to space and back. Today, I'm gonna to cover some of the types of tests we perform and why it's important to test on the ground before we start testing in the air. There will be a chance for questions at the end. So if you guys haven't already submitted questions through social media, feel free to add them into the chat window. All right, so testing is a very broad topic because just like you take tests for different subjects in school, like math or history, we have different subjects within engineering and we need to make sure we test parts within each of those subjects. From electronics, like the computers that help the spaceship pilots fly safely, to systems, like the valves that control Unity's feather, you guys remember Mike Moses explaining the feather system in our second space chat. And then there are the parts that hold the spaceship together and protect her from the various forces she experiences during her flight. We call this the spaceship's structure. Now, a lot of testing requires making extra parts, parts that we'll never actually use on the real spaceship, but rather we build them just so we can break them on purpose. We call this destructive testing, and it's very important because it allows us to find the ultimate capability or the maximum amount of force those parts can handle. We also have a lot of non-destructive testing, and this is more of a checkout just to make sure everything's working properly. Either way, almost every aspect of the spaceship gets tested on the ground before she ever leaves the ground. Now, I'm mostly gonna be focusing on structures-related testing today as that's my background. 
So let's go ahead and start with a structures test. And if you guys wanna participate and have a pencil nearby, feel free to grab it. But make sure you don't grab your favorite pencil because we are gonna be performing a destructive test. For that reason, you also wanna make sure you don't grab a pen or a marker because you'll have quite the mess to clean up afterwards if you do. All right, while you guys are grabbing your pencils, I'm gonna ask a question. How much force do you think it would take to break this pencil? A little? A lot? Well, we can guess, and we can probably come up with a pretty good guess, but until we actually break it, we don't know for sure. So if you all have your pencils now, I want you to grab either end and start with just a little bit of force at first to try to bend your pencil. And if it's not broken yet, try to put just a little bit more force on it. And I want you to slowly add more and more force until it breaks. Now in that experiment, we very quickly found the limit or the maximum amount of load that that pencil could handle under a bending load. But what if we didn't want that pencil to break? Well, that's why we test our parts and our spaceships on the ground first. On the ground, we have a lot more control. We can control how hot it is, how cold it is, and how much force we apply. That way we can make sure all the parts are good for the space flight and can work time and time again. It allows us to find the limit each time. So how do we test those parts? Well, we start out with small scale testing at the material level. Last week, Scott taught you all about carbon fiber and why we use it to build our spaceships because it's lightweight and it's strong. And we can determine that strength through testing small samples of the material, like this one here. We call these coupons. And this coupon was specifically designed for tension testing. And just like we applied a bending load to that pencil, and then there's tension testing, we have several different kinds of testing and load cases we can apply. And let's talk about tension for a second. Tension is what happens when you grip on either side and pull really tightly in opposite directions away from the center of the material. Think of tug of war. If you and your friends have ever played tug of war, you're actually putting the rope in tension. Now, usually in tug of war, the game ends when one group gets pulled too far in the opposite direction of where they're trying to pull and they cross the line. In our case, we continue to pull the coupon until it breaks. Now, once we tested hundreds of these coupons in tension and several other load cases, we have a pretty good idea of how the material behaves. We can then move on to testing multiple materials to see how they work together, like the sandwich panel that Scott showed you guys last week. Or joint testing, where we evaluate an area where two or more parts meet. The next level up is large scale testing. Now that's where we test large parts of the spaceship rather than individual samples of it. One example of this is our cabin pressure test that we performed. We built a whole nother cabin of the spaceship and rather than sending it to space, we filled it up with water. Now the cabin is where our pilots and our astronauts sit. So it's really important to make sure that the air doesn't escape. You guys can actually recreate a similar test to this at home using a water balloon. As you fill the balloon up with water, you'll notice that the balloon, representing our cabin in this case, can hold the water that's inside of it. But what were to happen if you were to poke a hole in that balloon? What if the hole was there to begin with and you didn't know about it? And this is why it's important to test and to test on the ground first. Now, most of the testing I've talked about so far has been destructive testing, where we build other parts or samples of parts in order to break it on purpose. But if you recall earlier, I mentioned we also have non-destructive testing. This type of testing usually gets performed on the actual spaceship. Whether it's an individual part or testing multiple parts in a series to make sure they work properly, we call this integrated vehicle ground testing. And it's the last stage of ground testing that gets completed before we can start flight testing, which you guys are gonna learn all about next week. So now that you guys have some of the basics of structures testing down, let's go ahead and move on to some questions. All right, the first question we have is from Michelle Sawkins 
age 12 in Seattle. And Michelle wants to know, what is the most fun part of testing a spaceship? Well, Michelle, I personally like destructive testing. Um, I love the moments leading up to when a part is about to break. There's a lot of anticipation. You know it's coming, but you're not quite sure when, and then it breaks. And it's just a really big adrenaline rush, and I love the feeling of that. So that's been really fun. Good question, Michelle. All right, next question up is from Raj Luthra. And he wants to know, does the spaceship need a heat shield when re-entering the Earth's atmosphere? Great question, Raj. So I know Mike talked a little bit about this in our second space chat, but we actually have some thermal protection and that's the silver step Scott was showing you last week. And so we use that to protect the areas that get warm, but relatively speaking, compared to the space shuttle, we stay pretty cool because of our feathering system. We create a lot of drag and it slows us down coming through the atmosphere, so we don't create nearly as much heat as what the space shuttle used. The space shuttle had really thick tiles, and for us, we just have that thin silver stuff called Kapton that uh, Scott showed you guys last week. So great question. The next question is from Craig Williams, age 13 from Texas. And Craig wants to know, what would be your tips for a young aspiring engineer? Oh, great question, Craig. Well, I think the first part of the answer is probably obvious. You need to make sure you do really well in school and study hard. But I think you also need to make sure you always stay curious. Make sure you're always asking questions. And if you don't know how something works, try to figure it out or do some research to find out. I also think it's really important to make sure you stay working with your hands and have some hands-on projects. So designing and building your own spaceship is a good start to that. Uh, but also if your parents need help changing the oil on their car or if you can get involved into some other hobby where you have a hands-on project i think it's really important to be able to train both your mind and your hands good question craig all right next question up is from sophie smith from florida and she wants to know what is the best thing about working at a spaceport oh that's a good question I love getting to work at a space short, uh, spaceport. For, for starters, it's, it has a spaceship, so that's pretty exciting to be able to see every day. But I think if I had to pick the absolute best thing about working at a spaceport, it would be that you get to work in a building where it's the last building a human is going to stand before they become an astronaut. And it doesn't get any cooler than that. Um, so I, I absolutely awesome getting to work in a spaceport. Good question. Uh, all right, Capri Powell wants to know, what does the spaceship weigh? When she's fully loaded with fuel, she weighs roughly around 30,000 pounds, which is pretty light for a spaceship. And, oh, I think we're actually out of time for questions. Sorry guys, but thank you so much for asking. Those were great questions. Um, before we close today's space chat, I do want to make sure we answer the questions I asked at the beginning, though, about what you learned from Scott's session last week. So the first question was, what happens to aluminum when it gets too hot? The answer is, it holds on to that heat and it starts to expand. We call this thermal expansion. And the second question was, what insect did we borrow the honeycomb shape from? And the answer is, a bee. Sometimes the best engineers are found in nature. I also have a bonus question for you guys. Last week, Scott showed you a part from our spaceship that was made out of wood. Were any of you able to guess what that was? It's actually our nose skid. We use that in place of a wheel for our front landing gear. All right, so by this point, we challenged you guys to design and build your own spaceships at home. And next week, you're gonna learn all about flight testing those spaceships. But for this week, I'd like to switch gears and make you all test engineers. So if you go to www.galacticunite.com slash kids corner, you'll find the marshmallow activity. Now this is a challenge to build a tower out of dry spaghetti noodles, but with an engineering twist. You have to balance a large marshmallow at the top of your tower. This is a fun one to play with a family because a lot of times kids end up building the tallest towers. They get right to designing and testing their theories, whereas adults spend a lot of time up front thinking about it and don't have time to build as tall of a tower. 
So I want you guys to challenge yourselves amongst your family and amongst your friends to see who can build the tallest tower. And be sure to share photos with us as well using our hashtag science with Virgin Galactic. Be sure to tune in next week where you'll hear from one of our pilots on what it's like to test a spaceship in the air. Stay tuned for a quick video of a sneak peek of some flight testing. Be safe and we'll see you all next week.